how to intercede for others effectively. Uh, fasting is one of those spiritual disciplines that will lead you to also intercession. Sometimes you will be interceding for your friends, your family members, you will be interceding for your co-workers and I want to share with you today biblical principles of how to intercede for others. Now a few examples of intercession. Uh, Job interceded on behalf of his friends. Abraham interceded on behalf of sinful Sodom. Abraham interceded on behalf of Abimelech. Moses interceded on behalf of Pharaoh. Moses interceded on behalf of Israel. Samuel interceded on behalf of Israel. Solomon interceded on behalf of Israel. Ezra interceded on behalf of Israel. Esther interceded on behalf of her nation. Nehemiah on behalf of Judah and Jerusalem. Jeremiah on behalf of Israel. Daniel on behalf of Israel. Syrophoenician woman interceded on behalf of her daughter. Parents interceded on behalf of their epileptic son. Church interceded on behalf of Peter. Paul interceded on behalf of God's people. Jesus intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And God is looking for intercessors. It says in Isaiah 59 verse 16, He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness it sustained him. Bible also, the Bible also says in Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and 31, For I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. Meaning God was planning to destroy the land. But at the same time, He's looking for an intercessor who will stand on behalf of that land so God doesn't destroy it. But God says, I found none. I found none. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. So, we see that God, the ministry of intercession has been practiced by great men and women of God. From Job, Abraham, Nehemiah, Ezekiel, Esther. Jesus Christ, who continues to live, to live to make intercession for us. The Holy Spirit who makes intercession for us. God is looking for intercessors because as the wrath of God, as judgment of God is coming on the land, God says there is one group of people that can actually stand in the gap and prevent that or postpone that. And guess who these people are? Intercessors. Intercessors are extremely valuable people in the realm of the Spirit. They move things. They shift things. God Himself said that. This is not us you know, coming to that conclusion. God Himself is looking for intercessors. And God Himself says that they have such a big role that they can postpone and sometimes even actually stop God's wrath from touching the cities and the land. You can look at that in the history of nations where the nation was plagued with corruption, where cities were filled with churches that had so much garbage in them, pastors that bickered, gossiped and you know had infidelities and then a group of intercessors will rise up and they would cry out to God and not only God will extend His mercy as He promises in Chronicles. God will actually forgive the sins. God will heal the land and God will begin to bring restoration because of people who intercede. Now, what is intercession? So as we are fasting and we're coming to an end of this fast, I, to my understanding, I actually have never shared about this that I remember. And the Lord put on my heart today to share with you because many of you have been interceding during this fast. Many of you have been invited by God randomly, 
during the night and during the day to stand in the gap for somebody and I just want to confirm that and I want to acknowledge a very important ministry of intercession maybe you felt that intercession is not necessarily you know it's not a ministry that gets a lot of spotlight it's a ministry that moves things behind the scenes that nobody sees when I was 16 years of age and I saw the vision of the kind of church God will give us like a Winkle store it's like a grocery store it had the front doors and it had the back doors the back doors you know are the doors where the semi trucks come they're not very pretty they're not very good looking it's not the doors you want to take photos in front of it's not they're not very appealing but if it wouldn't be for the back doors the food would never come to the store the store would have nothing to offer if the church and if Christians don't practice ministry of intercession we will not see some of the results promised in God's Word if in the Old Testament Israel would physically drive out enemies in the promised land in the New Testament the act of shifting the spiritual atmosphere is done more through intercession than anything else then the preaching can come then the evangelism comes without intercession clearing the spiritual airways we will not have as much effectiveness as the ground foot soldiers Moses interceded on the top of the mountain and only because of that Joshua was effective on the bottom of the mountain many times pastors wonder why there's no revival in their church and the solution is usually very simple there is no prayer and intercession and there's no fasting fasting prayer and intercession they clear something in the spirit realm that nothing else can do they purify the atmosphere if I could say they create an environment where revival can take root now prayer is good but intercession is also a very important aspect of prayer so let's define intercession first intercession is the act of bringing requests before God on behalf of others drop this in the chat intercession is the act of bringing requests before God on behalf of others another definition of intercession is intercession is standing in the gap is you standing in the gap I already read the verse where God says I sought for a man who would make a wall almost like create resistance and you would think resistance against demonic forces right but in here in Ezekiel 22 God says who will stand in the gap before me it's almost like God says my wrath is about to destroy this land not the devil's wrath God's wrath opens the door for the demonic oppressions but God says I need a man to stand in the gap and intercede you know when Moses interceded he interceded with God not to pour out his wrath on Sodom when others interceded it was intercession made to God they didn't do spiritual warfare they first pleaded with God to have mercy on the people that were deceived blinded and bound by sin so intercession as we've mentioned is act is bringing an it's an act of bringing requests before God on behalf of others it's standing in the gap before God now the third definition of intercession drop this in the chat intercession is filling up a cup of prayer so God can pour out an answer intercession is filling up a cup of prayer so God can pour out and answer now when people commit sin there's a cup of iniquity that's filled with the sins of people in Genesis 18 21 God says I will come down and see whether those people who have done this whether this outcry is true or not as people were crying out 
because of injustice, because of poverty, because of violence, because of abuse that was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah, this cry was collecting in a cup of iniquity against this city. And God came down to punish the city because the cup of iniquity got filled. The sins of people groups create outcry against people. And this outcry fills the cup of iniquity, which provokes God's judgment. We know God judges all sins at the end and at the end times. He will, we will stand before God and give an account. But there is a judgment. There is a wrath that gets poured out before the end times. How does this wrath gets poured out? How does this judgment come on people groups? It comes after the cup of the outcry against the city, against the region, gets filled up. And then God begins to move. Now, sometimes it takes very long. One of the reasons why it takes very long for God to pour out that judgment is because God is patient, hoping that among those people will rise another group of people who will begin to fill another cup called the cup of prayer. So there's a cup of iniquity and there's a cup of intercession. Cup of iniquity is filled by the sins of people that they cause against others and people cry out for God to have justice. The cup of intercession is different. It's people who are knowing, they know God's heart and they cry out to God for mercy. They cry out to God in repentance on behalf of the people that are wicked. And they're asking God for revival so that the wicked people don't get punished, but that they get pardoned, they get repentance and they get revival. So two cups are competing. And let me ask you a question. In your city, in your family, in your neighborhood, which cup is currently being filled up? Is the cup of iniquity filled up with the cries of people? One of the reasons Soviet Union fell is because of the cup of iniquity that was filled up. So much cries against this regime. But at the same time, there was a cup of intercession all around the world, including the underground churches that was getting filled up every single day with believers not saying God destroy the Soviet Union, though that's going to happen, but saying, Lord, save people in that regime. Lord, destroy the evil regime, regime and deliver people. What's happening with China right now? You know, there's an outcry, a silent outcry, you know, of people who live under that regime. You know, there's a lot of injustice that is done. There's a lot of human dignity that is not being valued. And God sees that and the cup is being collected. When abortion happens in the land, the cup of iniquity, the cries of those babies that maybe you don't hear, but God hears. It comes up to the Lord, the author of life. And this cup of iniquity, sooner or later, will provoke God's judgment. And sometimes that judgment can come in a way that we don't even realize. Not always it comes with fire stone, with fire and brimstone. Sometimes it comes in a way where a people group begins to live under a particular curse and a particular judgment. God gives the enemy the right to, to, to create havoc in that people group. And we see that in America. There's a lot of stuff that is happening in America that is part of God's judgment. And I believe that if America doesn't repent, you know, more judgment will be poured out. This is happening in other people groups as well. And I, I'm not the prophet of doom and gloom. I'm not a prophet at all. But what I do want to encourage you today, that as a church, our responsibility is not to just preach that the cup of God's wrath will be poured out. Our responsibility is that God is looking in the midst of abortion, in the midst of, you know, all of these perversions that are happening right now, in the midst of a woke church that is leaning more and more toward progressive theology instead of a biblical, orthodox, you know, scriptural, foundational teachings. In the midst of all this, God is calling people like you and I, that's why we're fasting, to begin to make intercession, to begin to fill the cup of prayer. Why? 
so that God can pour out revival. May our cup be bigger. May our cup be deeper than the cup of immorality and transgression. Now, for those of you who may be like, think I'm just coming up with this stuff. I'm not coming up with this stuff. In book of Revelation chapter 8 verses 3, it says, I saw another angel. He had a golden censer. He came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with the fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings and earthquake. Intercession is us crying out on behalf of unbelievers. Trans iniquity, the cup of iniquity, it's un people crying out under the burden and the weight of the sins of their community and of people around them. And God hears those cries. And though God is slow to judge because He wants to have mercy and is waiting for more people to stand in the gap. So for those of you who think that, you know, why is there's been so much death, so much shooting, maybe so much unjust injustice in my region and God is not judging it. Maybe because God's been waiting for you to intercede. God clearly states, before I come in in judgment, I wait. Is there somebody who can stand in the gap? Is there somebody who during their fast, I can um, really speak into them? Can you log in again? Speak into them and to see that they are the ones that can stand in the gap for me not to pour out that wrath. Amen. Is this helping anybody? Is somebody receiving this right now? If you are, drop in the chat. Drop this in the chat that I am going to be an intercessor. I am going to be an intercessor. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to dive in now more into how to intercede biblically. As I've highlighted, intercession is presenting our requests on behalf of somebody to God. It's standing in the gap. Intercession is filling the cup of prayer so that God could release the cup of His miracles into our life. Now let's look at how to intercede. I will take the reading or the story of Daniel. I believe that Daniel is one of the best examples of intercession in the Bible. Now there's many examples in the New Testament as well where Paul tells um, Timothy to make intercession and to bring all kinds of prayers to God in intercession. But I love Daniel's story. The reason being is that because there was also fasting involved in that and in Daniel's story we see that he actually went very layer by layer in an intercession. And so I'm going to right now go through just few practical principles on how to intercede. The first thing that I want to highlight is intercession should be in response to God's Word. Drop this in the chat. Intercession is in response to God's Word. Intercession is not just response into the needs and the cries of people or the problems of people. I want you to see how Daniel intercedes. He said, in the first year, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Daniel says, I looked into the books. I've seen in, this, in the scrolls that this desolation, this hardship should last 70 years. Now 70 years has already came to an end. And so Daniel now goes into intercession. Now how does that apply for us? Intercession is in response to God's Word. You should always have the Scripture as the foundation for your intercession. When you're believing for your loved ones, 
that you have the scripture where God desires none to perish, but everyone come to the knowledge of Him. When you are praying for your family members and you are in a place of authority like a father and mother, that you take the scripture of me and my family will serve the Lord. When you're uh, praying for your city and your region, that you take the scripture where it says to pray for the kings and those in authority that you take the scripture in Chronicles where it says that if my people humble themselves and they pray and they seek my face and they turn from their wicked ways that I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and that I will heal their land. And so this applies for the land, not just for individual family. And so it's important that our intercession is made in response to God's Word. God's Word is what gives us license. God's Word is what gives us green light to begin to make those petitions. Your intercession will always be in line with God's will if it's founded on God's Word. Drop this in the chat. Your intercession will always be in line with God's will if it's founded on God's Word. The second thing I want you to see concerning intercession and this again comes from Daniel. If we go to verse 3, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make a request by prayer, supplications, with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. The second principle of biblical intercession is that intercession should be characterized by brokenness and fasting. What gives fuel to intercession is brokenness and fasting. Prayer with fasting and brokenness is what fuels intercession. That's why when you are fasting, many times during the fast, the Lord will lead you. The Lord will guide you to intercede. It could be moments of deep travail, it could be moments of deep cry. It could be moments of groaning sometimes where you are not even able to utter words. And these moments where many times tears will roll down your eyes and you will be crying out on behalf of somebody else. Not on behalf of your needs, but on behalf of somebody else. It's a very special, very sacred and I do believe it's led by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because He intercedes through us. It's also led by Jesus because Jesus lives to make intercession for us. And so these are very special moments and for those of you who have those moments more frequently, I want to tell you something that God is using you specifically to stand in the gap and there will be answers to those prayers. Some of them you will only see in eternity. Therefore, Intercession should be characterized by fasting and brokenness. Now, I have mentioned already about fasting, so let's go to the next one. And that is Daniel and chapter 5, uh, uh, excuse me, chapter 9 and verse 5. And it says this, We have sinned and committed iniquity. And we have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts. So we see that Daniel, he acknowledges God's greatness. So I want to highlight something right now in verse 4. Is that intercession sees first God's greatness before it sees the suffering and the pain of people. I want you to see what Daniel saw. Is that Daniel saw the greatness of God. He says, O Lord God, awesome God, who keeps His covenant and His mercy. So intercession is something that we look to God's greatness, God's character. And few other times that Daniel highlighted that. Intercession depends on God's righteous and merciful character. And we see this in Daniel when he talks about God's 
awesomeness, God's mercy and uh, for those that love Him. And then later on, if we go to verse 7, he says the similar things, O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame, and it is to this day. Da -da 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 -da. And so then in verse 8, he says, O Lord, to us belongs shame again. And he keeps acknowledging and keeps honoring the goodness and the righteousness and the beauty of God's mercy. Intercession keeps seeing God's mercy and God's character keep seeing God's holiness and God's awesomeness. Intercession is not just seeing the wretchedness of our nation, the wretchedness and the, the lostness of how people are so lost, but it's seeing the beauty and the awesomeness and the glory of God. I would encourage you as you're interceding that you take these verses in Daniel's prayer and you pray them to the Lord. You acknowledge God's righteous character. You acknowledge God's mercy. That you acknowledge God's greatness. That you acknowledge that God is faithful. That you acknowledge that God is slow to anger. That God is quick to show mercy. Why? Because these are the characteristics within the character of God. These are His attributes. And we're actually leaning on these when we intercede that He will be slow to anger, that He will be swift to show mercy, that He will extend compassion, that He will be patient with our family members, that He will be patient with us. And so as you're interceding, as we are interceding, we are trying to appeal, glorify, acknowledge and look to the awesomeness and the beauty and the kindness of our God the goodness of our God who's good all the time, who's merciful all the time, who is loving all the time, who is awesome, who is holy, who also is righteous, who is judge, who will not let iniquity go unpunished, but He extends mercy to thousand generations. And so your intercession not only is supposed to be built on scriptures, it's supposed to be dependent on the attributes and the character of God. This is not just you having a fit. This is not just you. God, if you don't do it right now. God, if you don't say it right now. This, this is not that. This is not cornering God. This is not making threats. As we mentioned, this is in brokenness coming and remembering, reminding God, worshiping God and acknowledging the attributes that become the source of our faith and motivation. Honestly, they are the reason we're invited to intercede in the first place. If God wouldn't be merciful, our intercession wouldn't mean anything. If God wouldn't be compassionate, our intercession means nothing. If God would not be slow to anger, you asking God to postpone His judgment and you asking God to have mercy and to save people would really mean nothing. If God wouldn't be loving, if God wouldn't have an unconditional love for us, for all humanity, our intercession would not mean anything. So another facet of intercession and that is found in verse 5. In verse 5 Daniel says this and I want you to see this is very common. He said, we have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even by departing from your precepts and judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings and to our princes. I want you to notice that to us belongs shame. Daniel uses intercession and this is the next, next uh, pr practical uh, step of intercession. Intercession should be identified with God's people. Now this mainly deals with praying for nations, for our cities, but it can also include our family. Daniel uses we and us 22 times from verses 5 through 19. 22 times. Honestly, in those 22 times of references of we and us, Daniel wasn't guilty in pretty much any of them. He didn't commit those sins, but he identified with God's people. So when you repent on behalf of your city, when you repent on behalf of your nation, when you repent on behalf of your region, identify with your region. 
you're not asking God for forgiveness for them so that God can forgive them without them repenting. That is not what intercession is. Intercession is to cancel those legal rights through repentance by which Satan has gained access to our regions. When you identify with them, when you repent as part of the group because you are part of that group, you are part of that family, when, especially when your family was involved in that iniquity, when your whole family was involved in that sin. And maybe you were a part of that too. And you begin to repent even together with them as identifying with them. You're not saying that by again, by repenting on their behalf that they will be now forgiven from sins. But now I believe the Lord can move and begin to break certain habits and certain strongholds in their life. Now, final things that I want to highlight and that is intercession does not involve engaging with principalities and doing second-hand, second-heaven warfare. I want you to see in Daniel's story, he did not fight the prince over Jerusalem. He did not fight um, a principality over Israel. He did not engage second heaven. We can, experience, we can experience needless casualties by engaging in second heaven warfare. And a lot of intercessors have made that mistake and they paid for that dearly. One of the biggest pitfalls of intercessors is they spend more time fighting demons for which they were not given clear assignment to do and less time on their knees pleading with God. I have, when I went to Romania, I've seen also and a good, who now has become a good friend of mine, a leader of a prayer movement in Romania and he said something to me. He actually recommended a book that I've read. It's called Needless Casualties of War and we can drop that link. When you, and he mentioned something, he says everywhere he has seen and he has a very strong house of prayer. They have a very strong team and I am always very weary when people are in a very strong in intercession. This is my only one concern with intercessions is that a lot of times they go into a deep um, intercession by engaging with principalities who are in second heaven. And so when I was conversing with him, you know, and I kind of wanted to get a feel and he really spoke very boldly. And he says, Vlad, everywhere I've seen where intercession teams begin to engage in second heaven warfare, there comes casualties. And he says casualties in their families, there are churches, the church he, would describe, he was describing, it was a mega church. It got reduced to just 50 or 60 people. And he says the core reason he believes as an intercessor himself was in being involved in secondhand warfare. So I want to invite you not to do that as an intercessor. Now, we are wrestling against not flesh and blood. We are wrestling against principalities and powers. But in the Ephesians chapter 6, there is no indication of us having an offensive battle with principalities. But it's more of a defensive battle by putting on the armor of God. Nowhere did Paul mention in Ephesians chapter 6 that you are to pick a fight with those demons. Remember, your authority as a human being from Genesis to Revelation has always been over the earth. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Have authority over the birds, that's earth, over the fish, that's earth, and over everything that lives on the earth. We are not given authority in the spirit realm, in the other dimension, which is second heaven. That's what we call it. Jesus said the same thing. Behold, I give you authority. He says, I saw Satan fall fall down and I let, I'm let i giving authority to trample upon snakes, to trample. We're dealing with demons on the earth. We're not dealing with supernatural beings in the heavenly places. There's a lot of teaching that these supernatural beings were actually 
initially assigned by God over regions and nations, but then later on they rebelled against God, that they were God's sons. I have a whole teaching on that. Just check it out. It's called dealing with principalities. So if you're an intercessor, this does not mean we cannot bind and loose demonic spirits from people's lives. Again, we're dealing with demons that are tormenting people. We are not dealing with the high-ranking entities that oversee regions. And so what many times intercessors in their zeal and I believe lacking wisdom have done is that skipping these principles of intercession, of praying through God's Word, praying into God's character, standing in the gap and identifying with people and repenting, fasting, crying out to God. What they have done a lot of times is they skip all of this and just go straight for, you know, I bind the spirit, the principality over my city. I bind the principality over my neighborhood. And so, and they get involved in that. And sooner or later, these practices, out of which most are not warranted, they result in needless casualties on your family, on your health, and on your finances. Why? Because when you go into the realm, you were not given authority. People say, well, we have all the authority. Legally, yes, but the parameters of our authority is casting demons out of people. We were never in the Scripture given assignment to drive out spirits over regions. We just don't see that. We can be aware of the kind of spirits that are in the regions and we can pray for God to begin to bring people to salvation. We can evangelize, make disciples and we weaken that principality's stronghold over our region. Okay, but when it comes to engaging directly with those kind of demonic principalities, um, we can find ourselves in needless casualties of war that we could avoid by staying within our lane. Now, for those of you who maybe this was just a little bit too much, um, we do have some videos on that and I would encourage you to watch it. There's an interview I did with uh, uh, Don Dirkament where we talked about that as well. And um, there's a sermon that I did called Principalities where I go through 10 points on who principalities are. And there's also other videos that we've done about not engaging in the secondhand warfare. So I just want to encourage you to begin to pray and intercede. Now, I do believe that God has given us power to bind and to lose. Okay. And so whatever is bound in heaven will be bound on earth. We are to pray for individuals, our family members. And we can pray like this, that we come against every scale over their eyes, every, every demonic deception over their eyes. So we're praying again for individuals. When praying for regions, we mainly pray for people in authority. We pray for them, not necessarily against a spiritual entity controlling them. We pray the Bible says to humble ourselves and to pray in repentance for our healing of the land. Not, it doesn't give us instruction to go and attack something that is controlling the land. Jesus says to pray for Jerusalem. He didn't say go and fight the principality of Jerusalem. And so when it comes to the regions, we mainly pray a prayers of repentance and we pray a prayers of for our people and for those in authority believing that as they come to Christ one by one and as we begin to see a higher percentage of people committed to Christ, we begin to see a shift in our culture thus resulting in that principality being weakened and being defeated. This is our way of doing a spiritual warfare against principalities. Now, so therefore like these things of walking around, you know, your neighborhood or a bar or something and you know, praying it down that it closes and all of this stuff. You know, there's better ways to do that um, than just, you know, conquering that. If that place of business is not yours, if that place of business legally wants to operate and they want to, you know, sell drugs, do alcohol and, you know, have prostitution, 
your goal is not just to, during the night to pour you know 27 gallons of oil on the on the sidewalk hope that this oil is going to damage them and I know there's plenty of stories of people saying and this got closed down and that got closed down um, but there's also a lot of other stories of people doing that having very heavy repercussions and so the best way to do that is to begin to pray for people who are victims people who are sinners and then start evangelizing to them start telling about Jesus start going and speaking the good news you know bringing maybe some food there and start bringing winning people over from the dark side to, to the light to Jesus's kingdom and so your intercession is for people not against um, the principalities but when you're dealing with a family member that maybe is currently under a spell and they want you to pray for them or even if they are not believers and they don't want you to pray for them we are still invited by God to stand in the gap and intercede for their salvation. That God will open the eyes. That the Word of God will penetrate their hearts. That God will grant them repentance. That any resistance will be broken down. That any pride will be broken down. That God will speak to them in dreams, in visions. That God will send them people in their work and, and in the coffee shop who will begin to witness to them. And so these are the prayers we ought to pray. Sometimes God will lead you and specifically reveal to you that the person you're praying for has a demonic spirit this particular demonic spirit that is deceiving them and so and you, you, you in prayer and in intercession you know after you've pleaded for their salvation you know you come against that and you bind that you say I bind that demonic spirit that is blinding my family member that is deceiving my family member I'm breaking the grip you know, Pharaoh let those people go in the sense that let this person go. They belong to Jesus Christ. I claim them for Jesus Christ. And so we mainly deal particularly with, with the spirits that are holding these people hostage versus going into the second heaven where we are dealing with principalities. And of course, the safest place when it comes to dealing with demons is when they people have them and they come for help. We see this happen with Jesus. He delivered people that came to Him for help and, um, and then He delivered them. And so He didn't necessarily kind of go everywhere and just look for demons. And so He just uh, delivered people that came to Him for help. And so that is kind of how the ministry of deliverance usually operates. We, we don't go, people sometimes say, well, if you, if you do deliverance, why don't you just go and empty hospitals, you know, for mentally ill people. If you do healing, why don't you just go and empty hospitals. And you know, people who say that they're, um, uh, they're, yeah, th that's just not how that works and stuff. So it, I would say to them, well, if you believe in the gospel, why don't you go and just save everybody and stuff. That's just not how that works. Some people don't want to be saved. And some people, you know, they don't believe in Jesus to heal them. And so we, we don't impose that on people, nor do we impose deliverance. So that is in a nutshell about ministry of intercession. Has this been helpful to anybody? Uh, drop that in the chat. Number one, if this has been um, helpful and if you have received something from this, amen. And I want to take a moment and pray right now for people that are sick, people that are battling with illness. And so if you are struggling right now with sickness and with pain, I'm going to pray for you. And so I'm going to ask you that you just in the, in the chat, in the comments there's everywhere we have about a thousand people on all the platforms watching right now but begin to just drop in the chat what you believe in God what you believe in the Lord to do for you right now and so and then we're going to be praying right now we're going to be asking the Holy Spirit to come and for the Lord to begin to move powerfully in the name of Jesus Christ dear Holy Spirit I invite your presence in this chat right now Dear Holy Spirit, I thank You for Your power. I thank You that nothing is impossible to You right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I speak healing to those that are sick. I speak healing to those that have a neck pain, bone pain, pain in their bones, pain in their joints, in Jesus' mighty name. Precious Holy Spirit, I ask You right now for those people that have issue in in their body right now when you bring when you bring restoration right now in Jesus name restore them to their original position I speak healing 
to every muscle pain. I speak healing right now to every lower back pain in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, heal ankles, heal liver right now. Lord, heal infirmities right now in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke every gastritis in the name of Jesus. I rebuke deafness right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit with your presence. Come Holy Spirit with your power. Come Holy Spirit with your anointing right now. Holy Spirit come minister to your people. Restore your temple right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of infirmity tormenting your body. Every curse that is generational of chronic disease. I rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I command you to come out of that body. Loose that person right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed right now in your body. Be healed in every place where there is pain, heart problems, liver problems, kidney problems, skin. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. Sleeping, I rebuke every problem with your sleeping. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing to your mind to your brain. Lord, nothing is impossible to you. Bring your restoration and healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lumps, growths, cancer cells, even as we're fasting, let them be gone. Let them be removed in Jesus' name. Let them be removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who received the prayer right now, I want you to begin to exercise your body. Do something that you could not do. Check in that place where maybe you have had that pain and that suffering. Um, if you notice that the pain is gone, let me know in the comments as well as go to hungrygen.com forward slash testimony. We would love to hear your testimonies. I know the Lord heals every time we pray. The Spirit of God moves and He restores people. And so today is going to be no different. And so let us know in the chat as well as let us know in the email when you send to us on hungrygen.com forward slash um, testimony. So this is going to be um, very much appreciated. Um, guys, a few things that we want to um, take a moment to do. We do have our uh, deliverance, digital deliverance starting in just a moment. Um, so I will send you all in just a moment to Rickard's live stream. And so they are live streaming. We are live streaming um, deliverance in just a moment where I believe you can also receive deliverance, even just participating, watching. But um, uh, even if you missed being on Zoom. But we wanted to answer a few questions uh, for those of you that are asking right now. A few questions, so go ahead and... Um, John Adams, praying for you. Uh, John Adams in the chat. Is this the John Adams from Canada? The pastor that is going to be ordained tomorrow. Just always curious if it's the same person. No. Or uh, because John uh, Abrams, that's right, that's a different one. I apologize. So, because when I see that, I'm always wondering if it's so. It's John Abrams, okay? So, I thought maybe he's watching us on the live stream all the time. Uh, talk to him about it. Um, okay, so um, if you have some questions, go ahead and just drop it. Um, as we are doing that, I want to invite you to partner with our ministry. Um, for those of you who are coming to the end of the fast, um, this would be a good moment to make a decision to be a um, partner with uh, Vladimir Subject Ministries. It will help us to reach more people for Christ. It will help us as well to produce more courses, to release the things that we release, 
and to do the ministry that God has called us. And so um, this ministry is reaching people globally and as well as discipling them digitally. And so you can go to pastorvlad.org forward slash partner. We are believing for more partners this year and we can do more things for God this year. Thank you for everybody who's been doing that. And especially if this fasting last three, three weeks has been a blessing. It's been a huge sacrifice for me as well but I joyfully make this sacrifice so I'm not going to complain about it and um, but I would love to have your also participation participate with me and that is partner with us it will be much appreciated uh, for those of you who are partners how many of you are already partners with Vladimir Subject Ministries drop number one in the chat and um, thank you for those of you that are giving through the YouTube or giving through the Cash App or Venmo. And then I'm going to just look at a few questions and answer them. Oh, how excited I am for this to be over. Uh, not for the live streaming to be over, but I'm excited for the fast to be over. My wife is already uh, craving for me to take her out to, to eat. And, um, you know, she's fasting too in her capacity and in her way um, uh, it's a little bit harder for my wife to fast because she um, she's very tiny and so but she she still participate especially right now interceding we, we have a particular need for a person that we're believing for to be saved and to be really rescued right now and so we're interceding and praying so this these teachings come comes very very good to me you know and even though it seems like it's one day left guys but to be honest with you tonight i'm going to talk to you about this so do not miss tonight it's not really one day left of fasting it's really about five more days because when you're going to be coming out of the fast um you can't just come out in one day so uh, we will kind of uh, talk about it tonight so for those of you who are um you know thinking hey that's it tomorrow i'm gonna go and eat so much <laughs> you missed the whole point so it's really still about a week left <laughs> of kind of gradually coming out so um, so yeah so we'll talk about that tonight so I'm gonna leave that for tonight um, what time does the fast end tomorrow so for us um, the fast ends after church so after church um, we are um, coming out of a fast yeah so that's but that's about that but yeah it shouldn't be the burger the burger should bur burger burger should not even be on your mind for at least like seven days and stuff so yeah as a young believer i have been guilty of praying against the principalities i believe i've suffered for it as well anything i can do um you can repent you can repent it's what i had to do because i used to do that too when i was younger and um just kind of you know out of my zeal and um, when I started to learn more about this I recognized that you know a lot of times we hide under these binding of principalities but we actually don't evangelize and so as our church started to focus on actual evangelism and you know let's go win souls we really started to you know shift our strategy we intercede a lot we have an intercession group on telegram uh, global intercession group we also have an intercession group that's hungry gen intercession group we have few personal intercessors as well that we are standing in the, that they're standing in the gap with with us and um, yeah so but I would just repent and then just not do it again Pastor Vlad when will you be coming to North Carolina I will be coming to North Carolina in March can I have a fruit roll up like just one just like one with my bone uh, broth separated um, we'll talk about that tonight so tonight at 7 p.m. so tonight I'm going to do my finale um, uh, fasting stream and we're going to talk about uh, tonight about that um, so yeah um, okay you need to tell us what is good to eat when it come off the when we come off the fast soup chicken lol noodles tonight we're gonna address this so I'm not gonna address it right now because I'm going to address it tonight so Graceland if you can schedule the chat if you can schedule the stream right now and then we can drop this so that people can right away hit remind me so that tonight we don't miss it so it will be late for those of you in the East Coast it will be at 7 p.m. Um, here um, 
but I'm thinking maybe we should do at 6.30. Yeah, let's do at 6.30, guys. Let's do at 6.30, so just slightly earlier. Um, let's do at 6.30. Um, the fasting videos will be left up, uh, will be left there on our playlist. Yes, so let's do it at 6.30 tonight on my channel. So right after this, we're going to drop the link right now. So this way becomes a little bit easier for those of you on the East Coast. Um, so yeah. What time does deliverance start? So deliverance, from my understanding, has started. Okay, so Rickard is still playing the... No, no. Okay, so deliverance has started already. So I'm gonna send you guys there in just a moment, a uh, few more few more minutes, and then um, it will be on Zoom though, and only those people who have went through the courses and have received the Zoom link will be will be on them. So not ever, you're not gonna be able to join the Zoom right away, okay? But you'll be able to just kind of watch and participate and receive even from online. Uh, when is the March fasting? It's March 6th through 8th. That's where the March fasting. Will you ever come to Philadelphia? I don't have any plans yet. I'm in Netherlands and do not have a local church yet. Can Hungry Gen be my local church? Yes, um, yeah, Hungry Gen can be your local church. I know actually Pastor Rickard is going to Netherlands uh, this year. Um, so to a conference there. But if you don't have a local church, welcome to be part of Hungry Gen. Watch us live. Where's the link to the videos he posted in the chat? Um, not sure which videos you're referring to, but the videos and principalities, you can just YouTube it, say principalities, Pastor Vlad, and they will come out. The video for tonight, we are scheduling that right now and we will drop that in the chat. So when you log off, you can just go to my YouTube and it will just show up on the featured. How do I repent from intercession against principalities? Um, you just repent, you know, ask God to just kind of forgive you for stepping out of your boundaries and then ask God to remove any repercussions from that, um, to, to break off any consequences from that, and just make a promise to stick within the scriptural boundaries of intercession. When you come to Colombia, which city? So I'm coming to Bogota, but I am not coming for an event where I will be ministering, okay? So I am coming there to a conference, uh, Bogota, Colombia, but I am not coming um, to minister there at least not this time maybe in the future i will what is the meaning of the second heaven warfare and intercession what did you mean by this i am lost on your explanation uh, second heaven intercession and warfare it's when you are fighting principalities as part of your intercession principalities that rule regions that's what i mean by second heaven so the first heaven is the one that you see physical one the second heaven we believe is the one that is between in between the third heaven is where God's presence is at. So, uh, you know, heaven is not necessarily like, a, you know, a place on another planet. It's just another realm. And so, and in between um, this realm that we see and then the realm where God dwells, you know, there's this, uh, where a lot of theologians would say the second heaven, warfare. You know, uh, the devil being the ruler, the prince of the air and all of that stuff. Will you be doing deliverance when you come to Houston in April? I think you asked me that question yesterday, but that is usually my format is to do two services and one of them is to do deliverance. Yes. Will you come to South Africa? I don't have any plans yet. I started to receive these tremors, baby earthquakes, shakes in my body right in the middle of my chest. They don't hurt. Hard hard to describe really have you heard about this before no i have not i wonder what day of the fast you were on and then um if you do notice that during a fast you're not feeling good um you know your heart maybe is racing or you're puking all the time throwing up all the time um you know you, you really need to uh, consider coming off of the fast and do something else with your fast um and if you are you know doing good and just like slightly tired then you know continue but if you're not, you definitely should not, you know, be fasting uh, completely food and stuff. And so I am not a medical doctor, so and uh, nor am I a nutritionist. So I, I can't advise you on what each person should do. Um, majority of people in 
they seem to be able to fast water you know for for some time and uh, but there are cases of people who are not able to who are not pregnant they're not nursing and they're not um you know they're not anorexic or they're not children they're not on medication but they still just they're just not able to fast and so um it could be spiritual it might not be spiritual it could be physical and so um do you have enough time take a shower and done to able to watch stall I'm not sure what this question means. So whoever puts these questions, let's put the questions that actually kind of make sense. Because I'm sorry, I don't don't understand this question. I was added to the deliverance today. I'm trying to get the link through the email that was sent to me, but my phone wouldn't open my email app. How do I connect now? Um, maybe do it on your computer and stuff. So I, I don't, I can't. Um, do you have enough time? Take a shower and be done and still able to watch. Ah. Oh, I apologize. Do you have enough time to take a shower and watch, I'm assuming, Deliverance? If you are talking about Deliverance, yeah, you should. Uh, the stream will be for a few hours. If you haven't had a breakthrough, should you keep fasting? Um, you should finish fasting when you decided to fast for this long. And then um, sometimes people continue to fast until they get a breakthrough. Sometimes people get breakthrough after the fast so i wouldn't concern myself too much with you know did i get a breakthrough so for me i'm gonna finish the fast when i've decided to fast you know for 21 days and um, and i focus very little on the breakthrough i got or not i do know that there will be a breakthrough i just know that god sometimes releases it in a different times I already have received certain things during the fast. I do believe that I'm going to be reaping the benefits of this fast even down the road. I keep getting angelic visitations. What's the meaning of this? Um, actually, quite few people during a prolonged fasting get um, angels visit them and give them instructions and um, give them guidance. I know a few people who had a 40 day fast and they had an angelic visitation in the dream or they had a actually one pastor shared he actually had a physical angel came to his house and so um, it's totally possible and sometimes these angels they're ministering spirits so I have a whole teaching on angels that you can watch and um, these angels you know God assigns angels uh, for a season for a reason for particular assignments and they bring certain information that you know sometimes God chooses to use them um, in that regard so I think it's a good thing is tonight 6 30 p.m. Eastern or 9 30 Eastern so tonight 6 30 Pacific uh, time zone so I think in your case it will be 9 30 Eastern time if there is no significant change during the fast should you do more days I really want to know um, it depends on you uh, I have a friend Ben Fitzgerald and he went on a 21 day fast water fast and he didn't feel that he got any breakthrough so he actually continued from 21 days to 40 days and then on the 37th day you know he really got a huge breakthrough and that's how this europe europe awakening started actually was during that fast so it depends i always say this if the lord doesn't lead you then end the fast when you decided to end the fast if the lord leads you and you can be very certain it is the leading of god not you just kind of like you know want to fast for very long then um, i just stick with the decision that you already made before and just fast and god will reward the fast but like i mentioned in previous live streams sometimes uh, harvest comes after sowing not during sowing how often do you do an extended fast a year personally I do an extended fast once a year unless I am led to do it you know more uh, my cousin Ilya a pastor of hungry gen like last year he did four of 21 day water fasts. you know so some people use it differently but he felt led to do that um, so I usually do just one extended one and then the rest of 11 or 10 um, shorter they're still still prolonged I consider three-day fast prolonged fast and so doctors will consider that as a prolonged fast one day is not a prolonged fast but three days is a prolonged fast so I usually try to do 10 prolonged at least that's that's my desire for this year and then one extended 
I want to know what exactly does the fasting include. Not eating. And eating God's word. Praying. And again, not eating. The word fasting means not to eat. Is it recommended to acknowledge angels when you see them? There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you don't worship them. Um, you know, angel came to um, John and gave him actually the book of Revelation. And John started to worship him and angel said, whoa, 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 stop doing this. So if an angel starts telling you to worship him, then you're most likely dealing with a demon. And whatever angel says, if it's not consistent with the scriptures or the gospel, then you're dealing with a demon. And you can fall into the same heresy that Muhammad fell. And Paul warns us in Galatians, if any spirit comes and teaches you a different gospel, then I taught you. He says, let it be anathema, meaning like, curse that thing get rid of it and just rebuke it you can even ask an angel if it acknowledges acknowledges jesus that he came in the flesh you know this acknowledge jesus as the savior um, of the world and as a son of god so yeah does the fasting include only drinking water all 21 days uh, i am interested biblical fasting includes um uh, it is abstaining from food for the spiritual reasons biblical fasting now in the western world we have added you know daniel fasting which is like um, you know abstaining from certain foods but in a biblical day uh, fasting meant no food at all and you were allowed to drink water or you know drinks now in the old testament of course they didn't have necessarily drinks like other drinks like we have you know um, as much as they mainly drink water and a lot of times they did drink wine because their water was not as purified and so, uh, but during a biblical fast, I believe it's okay to drink water and sometimes even to supplement some other things in the water like uh, fasting salt or maybe add, we encourage people to add supplements, B complex, it helps with fasting and it just helps overall to take, a sup to take supplements. Where do I find the classes to be able to join Zoom services and meetings? We don't have Zoom services and meetings except deliverance Zoom. Um, and that one is found at hungrygen.com forward slash deliverance. Pastor Ilya has his um, live streams with Zoom ministry and Ivan also has with Zoom ministry and they add them on their live streams when they live stream. Ever since I started fasting, I've had dreams every night which I didn't have before. I don't understand them though. Can the enemy be, be preventing me from interpreting them? Uh, we have a whole live stream that we've done on dreams with my wife. I would encourage you that you write your dreams down. And some dreams are pizza dreams, some dreams are demonic dreams, and some dreams are from God. And usually when you wake up, a lot of times you just have this instant interpretation that the Lord gives you. And if He doesn't give you, but this dream lingers in your mind and you're pretty sure it's not demonic, what you can do is just write it down and then just pray about it and let the Lord give you interpretation. And if He doesn't give you interpretation, just keep it in your notes. How can I join the Zoom deliverance meeting? Again, you have to go through the um, classes on vladschool.com. Uh, as you go through the deliverance classes, it's a, the deliverance prayers actually. After all of those prayers, you will get a link for the next month's deliverance online service. Should I be fasting if I've been um, have anorexia? No, you shouldn't be fasting if you have anorexia. You're gonna die. You already. You you need to be healed of that or delivered of that first. You need to gain some weight. Because a lot of people with anorexia are very, very skinny. So. I feel the Holy Spirit is leading me to fast, but I don't know what kind of a fast I should do since I am under maintenance drugs. Ask, ask your doctor. Ask your doctor what fast would be okay in your situation. Most doctors are pretty open. If you have a good doctor, you know, to a fast and they're not necessarily going to tell you, oh, please don't do it. This is really bad. And so most doctors, but, but some doctors, you know, will will try to keep you away from that because there's a lot of benefits of fasting. And so and the problem is that when you start fasting a lot and or when you start fasting regularly, you might not need a lot of medication or you, you might not need a lot of you might not have a lot of sicknesses. And that's not really good for um, big pharma. What does the Bible memory group look like or is it called? 
So this is what the Bible memory group looks like right here. Um, so if you go to pastorvlad.org forward slash memory, this you will get the free Bible app. After you download the app, then you open the Bible app group and it will look something like this. Let me give you an example. So it will look something like this inside. After you join the group, you will click on this tab over here. So you, you, you know, get these verses, you click join the group, you can message us, you can invite your friends actually. And then um, you can actually choose which version of the Bible uh, verses. I'm using New King James, you can choose your own. Then this is how it will show up. Once you accept the invitation to the Bible group, you'll have the groups here. You can have your verses here. Then um, you can actually make your own collection. So like I have my own collection. People say, oh, I just want to memorize more verses. Come on, you're totally free to do that. You can actually just make your own collections and start memorizing on your own. I just encourage you that you don't start doing it so much that like next week as your life gets more busy and you're not fasting, you drop it completely. So two verses may seem a lot. It may seem very little. Wait until you get about 40 of them. Remember, these verses you will have to review every few days. So like right now I have 16 verses to review. You know, yesterday I had about 50. And so, um, so yeah, and I added three verses yesterday on the top of the group that I'm doing. But again, so I just kind of want you to pace yourself. And once you are clicking on one of those verses, you know, you can choose one, which you see all the verse, you're typing the first letter of each word. Two is when it skips some words and three, when it completely removes the, the word. You can click on these three buttons, choose to change the verse versus translation and um, shuffle verses like do a lot of other stuff with it so yeah so this is kind of the this is the group how it looks on a desktop and i just given you a tour of how it looks on um on the app I was very sensitive crying a lot in the beginning of the fast after the conversation with my friend i also noticed that stopped any advice sometimes it's possible to be more sensitive emotionally in the beginning of the fast um i usually get a lot more sensitive like that too um uh, people actually get moody sometimes for me it's a lot more easier to cry when i fast than any other time um, even in god's presence sometimes sharing something about god i could just get like literally start crying so like i don't know maybe just we're just more sensitive to the lord all right guys um so now i'm gonna ask you for something so as deliverance is going on pastor rickard is already dropping fire so let's go ahead and and show support i want you to go to this link right now okay for those of you who've given you became a partner so i want you to go on this link right now and just say hey we are here from past the last stream so he, Rickard is just doing deliverance prayer right now so you will be just in time for deliverance okay so go ahead and click on this so you can receive prayer for deliverance right now that's why I didn't do prayer for deliverance because I want Pastor Rickard to pray for you guys and stuff so um so go ahead and jump on the live stream and say from Pastor Vlad's stream right now we are here for prayer for deliverance so um yeah, I just dropped a comment there as well. So let's do that and let the Lord right now bring deliverance into your life in Jesus' name. Let's have this powerful deliverance prayer. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's drop that. Let's go all to Rickards. Let's help him to break at least like 300 or 400. If you are on Facebook as well. Oh, okay, so they're praying right now and they're ministering to other people. Um, so they are ministering right now to people on Zoom. So the prayer for deliverance, I think it's over already, but um, they're ministering to people on Zoom. You can still join in because we have different pastors right now on Zoom praying and you will be able to receive that. You'll be able to receive that prayer even there. Amen. So go ahead and join that. And then I'm going to switch it to thank you and I'll see you on the deliverance uh, live stream. I'm going to be there as well. Yeah, so uh, Pastor Ilya mentioned that uh, he will do m different mass prayer points during the live stream. So just just get in there, just kind of hang in there for a little bit. There will be different mass prayer points coming in every few 
um, every few minutes or so. So just receive. I believe that the Lord's going to use you. For those of you on TikTok, um, we're dropping the link right now. So uh, Graceland, if you can drop the link on TikTok, um, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube right now. So um, it's on YouTube and the YouTube channel is called um, uh, The Deliverance Podcast. 